What is a research gap? A research gap refers to unexplored or underexplored under explored areas that have a scope for further research. So when we uh, review literature and then we were able to find some areas that are within the literature that we have reviewed that uh, either those areas have uh, not been uh, explored or they have not been well explored, then uh, that uh, might provide us with a chance to find a uh, research gap. A research gap provide you with a reason for conducting your research because uh, without research gap, we can't just uh, embark on a research. So research gap is what uh, enable us, empower us to carry out a research. Research gaps are linked to your research uniqueness. Uh, and, and every research gap should exhibit what you call a novelty. It should be an original thought, something that has not been done. When we review the literature, we realize that uh, uh, some certain uh, 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 some problems have been not have not been solved, and then we propose new ways, unique ways that have not been proposed before, in order to find a way to uh, tackle those uh, areas that have not been uh, addressed within the literature. Now, gaps exist when there is uh, number one, there is lack of uh, or insufficient research on a topic. So when we review literature, as I've said previously, and then we realize that there are some areas that uh, have not been uh, explored properly, then that uh, provides an avenue for finding a research gap. Or either problem exists with the current study. So we are reviewing uh, literature and then we realize some proposals, some approaches. Since we are talking about computer science research gaps, we realize uh, some solutions that have been proposed, some problems. Uh, I, I have problems with them. They are not uh, providing adequate solution to that problem that they are meant to solve. Then we find a way to address those issues. And then that is our own research gap. All types of research always begin with a research gap. So when you have a research gap, then you have a research. Without research gap, you don't have a research. And no gap, no research. So how do we find research gaps? So actually, there is no a well-defined process to find gap in the existing literature. Uh, what uh, determines how we find research gap depends on our curiosity. So for you to find research gap, you have to be curious. You have to question the state of the art. Why is this thing being done the way it is? Why uh, X uh, is the way it is? Why are we using X to solve Y? Why are, using, why are we using Y instead of X? So you have to be curious. You have to ask questions. What? When? Why? How? So all those uh, uh, question, uh, uh, w -H, uh, w -H, uh and uh, H uh, what when where how we have to ask we have to ask questions we have to make a lot of queries for us to be able to uh, make use of our curiosity to find research gaps and creativity we have we have to be creative we have to think outside the box uh, we have to think outside the box to find innovative solutions. In, uh, in order to find uh, novelty and address our research gaps and we have to be imaginative and judgmental yes uh, this is right this is wrong we have to judgmental we have to uh, if you find solution that is right we have to say okay this is the right solution for for, for this particular problem or this uh, solution is inappropriate or inadequate or insufficient uh, in uh, in order to tackle this particular problem so our curiosity, our creativity, imagination, and judgment can help us to identify research gaps. So to find research gap, we have to read a lot of papers on a topic. So after determining your topic, then you have to find previous work, literatures that have been, uh, that have been proposed on that particular topic. And then we read, we read, we read, we read a lot. Because for us to be able to find research gaps, we have to be expert on that particular subject. If you don't have a, a, a well background knowledge on a particular topic, then you are not, you will not be able to find research gaps. So for you to be able to find research gap, you have to be uh, an expert on that particular topic. Now, by exhaustive reading and synthesis of the literature, so we read the literature, we understand it, we create, uh, we analyze it, critically look at it, and then we will be able to identify uh, lapses that are contained within that particular literature and then we think of ways to address those lapses.
Now, uh, looking at picture direction and limitations has or has always been suggested as a way to find research gaps. Uh, after reading a paper, after reading a literature, uh, a research paper, uh, the recommendations, the picture direction and the limitation of that particular paper can also serve as a potential for finding research gaps. However, it is not all that all, all the time effective. Now, when we look at it this way, uh, a researcher is an active researcher, and then after uh, finishing up uh, his research on a particular paper, he might want to be, uh, he might want to uh, continue or uh, with the research gap that he, uh, with the limitations of that particular paper, uh, the uh, what he has not been able to cover on that particular paper. If he's an active researcher, he might want to be able to continue uh, with his work. At a later stage so he might not reveal all the research gaps that that paper uh, has potentials for so uh, it is not a guaranteed way of finding a research gap at, uh, by looking at just uh, picture direction and limitation also if you uh, he won't be able to tell you he won't uh, he might not uh, some researchers might have told us everything about the lapses that are content uh, that are contained within their paper because it's a it's a weakness to their work so sometimes it is our own uh, how deep knowledge we have on a particular topic that we will be able to find research gaps. We will come to what we call explicit and implicit research gap. So some research gaps are uh, implicit. Uh, they are not suggested. It is our own uh, knowledge that determines how we are able to find that particular research gap. So uh, here are some tips to assist us in finding research gaps. First of all, for us to find research gap, we should first of all start with something that we are passionate about. Because research could sometimes be very boring. It takes a long time for us to even review literatures and find the research gaps. So uh, if, uh, if it is something that we are passionate about, it is something that we are highly interested, highly excited to work on, then, uh, uh, then the stress and the work that is uh, contained in the research gap will be lessened to a greater extent. So uh, just like saying, uh, if you want to, if you f if you make a job out of your hobby, it's like you have never worked. It's like uh, you are not even working at all. You enjoy it. Is uh, so make a hobby. Just like saying, make a hobby out of make a a job out of your hobby. So also research. Is something that you find something that you are passionate about something that you like doing something that you enjoy doing and then make sure that your research area is based on something that you enjoy not something that is imposed upon you by let's say your supervisor so it is something that you like doing you yeah, something that you enjoy that you are highly excited to work on so and then next the next uh tip is for us to determine what you call a mega trend or a centipede now in every field there are some uh, recent uh, phenomenal topics that uh, researchers are working on. Say Internet of Things, say machine learning, artificial intelligence. So make sure that uh, our area, uh, the topic that we are looking for is within the mega trends. Now what we are, uh, for us to identify the mega trends, there are some ways that we can identify the uh, some of these mega trends. Now uh, one way is for us to look at uh, research gate. So we can go to research gate and then we can ask uh, an opinion of expert researchers. So what are what are what is the mega trend in this particular field? So uh, when we uh, ask questions, because we know research gate provides us with a future where we can ask questions. So other researchers that are working on that field might suggest for us uh, topics that are trained that are in trend in that particular field. Also, another way is for you to search for research papers, say trends in Internet of Things, trends in uh, malware reverse engineering. So any topic, any topic that you're interested in, trends in that particular, uh, what are the research trends? There are some papers that contains uh, the state of the art, especially review papers that review the state of the art on that particular topic. So when you get hold of that paper, you will be able to find... Uh, what researchers are currently working on on that particular area and then you try you you can try to uh, now pick your topic uh, based on that particular trending uh, area trending topics pick a particular topic and then you go to Google Scholar and then try to find research papers that are on that particular topic and then begin your literature review 
so and, and also picking uh, and uh, make sure, making sure that our topic is out of the mega trend a recent debate will ensure that the research is timely and necessary uh, this are uh, very important because our research has to be timely it has to be because we say research is about solving problem so uh, it has to be uh, about a timely issue about a recent issues so we can be researching uh trying to provide solution to an all to uh, all 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 problems there are new problems that arise in the society so we will make research to solve those problems so our research has to be timely and it has to be necessary we can't just waste time take uh take time reading research papers trying to identify gaps when that uh research is not necessary so uh, making sure that our topic is within the mega trend we make sure that our third topic is timely it is solving a timely issue and it is really necessarily uh, the justification for doing that particular research also uh yeah, it is timely if the topic is one of the mega trend or recent debate uh so i uh, also uh and identifying a topic that is of the mega trend or recent debate will address a serious problem that requires urgent consideration so uh the next uh tip is for us to review recent literature so make sure we uh, review recent literature so uh let's see a uh, literature that span over three years so you just go to google scholar and then you uh you be uh, there, uh, uh, within google scholar there is a feature that will enable you to specify uh the number of years that you want to get uh research papers from now let's say you go to google scholar and then uh type uh, research papers that span uh three uh, uh 20 uh 20 uh to 2022 and then uh, we just enter the uh, our research uh, our research topic that we want to find find papers on. Let's say we are looking for uh, research papers on RPL. RPL. I'm actually working on RPL uh, RPL routing protocol. I'm, I'm working on RPL routing protocol as my as my uh, PhD thesis topic. So uh, RPL security issues on, on RPL or RPL routing protocol a lossy network. And then I enter the time period that I want to find research papers on, uh, 2022 to 2020. So I'll just hit enter and then uh, Google Scholar will fetch me all the research papers that are on that particular area uh, with that uh, have been published over those three years. So three years is, uh, is enough for us, uh, three years to make sure that uh, the research papers are timely. So and then uh, this will ensure that we know what scholars are doing uh, so far because we can't uh, research is not being done done in an isolation. Uh, we can't just uh, start doing research uh, on our own. We have to review what has been done on that particular field, and then we'll be able to find what scholars have not tackled. And then that is our research gap. So to be able to demonstrate how our research gap fit within the larger conversation in your field. So literature review is like a researcher's having a conversation. So uh, and we can contribute to the conversation without us listening to what the researchers are talking about. So the art of doing literature review is us listening to what the researchers are discussing, what they are talking about. So when we have listened to them, know what they are discussing and understand what they are discussing. And then we can now chip in and add our own uh, insight at our own at our own opinion to that particular discussion now that is how we identify the search gap and then make our own contributions to knowledge now why is it important to identify the search gap now to prevent major revision because uh, if you are doing a thesis you make sure that you have uh, your 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 your, uh, your thesis has to have novelty your contributions have to have novelty you have to make sure you do something that has never been done if uh, your research has been done before without uh, identify research gap without doing literature review identify research gap you definitely reinvent the wheel you might come up with an innovative Sol uh, a solution, an idea, innovative idea, but without you knowing that someone has already done it before. And then when you come to depend you, your thesis before your uh, supervision committee, you realize that uh, uh, you'll be informed that that particular idea has already been uh, been done before. So to prevent major revision, we identify research gaps. 
also to make sure our research is publishable when we when we write research papers and submit to journals journals will make sure that uh before they accept our research papers they will make sure that our research uh, has a, an element of uniqueness and novelty so without uh, our research having uh, novelty uniqueness then that paper is automatically rejected and also, uh, uh, this is related to the previous point. It will make sure that our research gap is unique and original research. Say one research gap per one paper. Uh, so for every research gap, after solving the research gap, you can publish a paper out of it and then uh, submit it to a journal. So it will make sure that our research is unique and original research. So it also in the process of finding the research gap, we know we have to go we have to review a vast amount of literature now this will ensure that we have a deep knowledge of the topic we become an expert in that particular field we can stand before anyone in this world to discuss about that particular topic now ex uh, as i've said earlier uh, there is uh, there is uh, explicit research gap and implicit research gap so what is explicit research gap explicit research gap when we review the introduction uh, of a paper we will, be re we will realize what has been the focus of the latest research and why then uh, and then we read through the limitations and the future research direction and assess the recommendation from the existing research now thus this will pinpoint to us it is showing to us directly what that particular research paper is tackling what has it has been able to address and what it has not been able to address which it hopefully wish to address in the future so that is definitely our it is showing us explicitly that this is what it has done and this is the scope of what it has been able to cover and this is what it has not been able to cover then what is not being what has not been able to cover is our now our research gap which we can extend that particular research uh, as our own uh, contribution to knowledge also when we read through survey papers and uh, review papers We'll be able to find because uh, the essence of our uh, surveys and review papers is to investigate the state of the art and pinpoint research gaps so basically when we just pick a survey and review paper when we read it we will know the research direction on that particular topic what the researchers have uh, have tackled and what has not been tackled so uh reading the survey and review papers is a very good way of identifying uh, research gaps so also uh, when we are uh, on the look for explicit research gap, we document our identify gap uh, limitations. So I also don't just take a, a gaps from a single study. So we have to go over a lot of studies on a particular topic. And then we create what you call literature matrix, where we create a table with uh, uh, we put uh, a description of the of the uh, the a description of your research paper. What the research paper is talking about? We talk. Uh, we create a column for methodology. We create a column for uh, for weakness, for strength and weakness of that particular paper. And then when we look at all the literature at a whole, we'll be able to pinpoint what are the research gaps on that particular topic what researchers have been able to tackle on that particular topic within that uh, particular time period and what has not been able to when what has not been uh, been tackled then what has not been tackled uh, from the literature matrix will be able to identify the research gaps so we don't just take a uh, research gap from a single study we have to go uh, several studies uh, several recent research uh, papers and then we'll be able to identify our research gaps so implicit research gap implicit research gaps uh that is uh is not something that is explicit it's something that we uh see we're able to see it with our own eyes due to our do as a result of we having a deep knowledge on that particular uh, topic so when we read in depth on the topic we'll be able to identify implicit research gaps and also, uh, it's not all the time. Uh, uh, There's what you call this a technical problematization method. We create a problem uh, from a particular proposal, a research paper. Uh, we try to see problems because we have a deep knowledge on that particular topic. We uh, challenge the claims on that particular paper. So we challenge the claims. We pinpoint gaps 
because we have a deep knowledge on that particular topic we challenge the claims of that particular paper we create problems uh, by ourselves on that particular topic and then we propose ways that that particular uh, proposal scheme could be improved upon and then that is our research gap so implicit research gap is a research gap that you will be able to find because as a result of you reviewing an, a lot of literatures on that particular topic and you have become an expert on that particular topic and then you will be able to see ways that that particular topic could be, could be improved that other researchers have not seen so these are some common mistakes in presenting research gaps. Number one is insufficient study. Without uh, without performing a deep uh, literature review, there is no way you'll be able to present your research gap. So for you to be able to present your, your research gap, you should have read a lot of research papers so that you can cite sources depending your argument on a particular issue. Now, also directly jumping to conclusion that nobody has investigated it before. So after finding a research gap, after finding a, a, a an idea that you believe is a research gap, you still have to go back to uh, to Google Scholar, find research papers uh, that uh, Google that particular research gap to see has other researchers attempted it before. Maybe you might find out that other research someone has already done it before. So after finding what you realize, what you think is a research gap, you have to go and look, uh, look through research papers to see to make sure that nobody has done it before. So if nobody has done it before, then that is definitely a research gap. Then you can start working on it. Also, lack of just justification for addressing the, uh, the gap. So after finding gap, you have to depend the gap. You have to make sure that. Uh, you can depend the gap. This gap surely exists and you can justify uh, the rationale, the significance of addressing that particular research gap. We are not doing the res doing research for, for doing research sake. We are doing research to solve a problem, a problem that is necessary, that is necessarily and timely. Also, uh, you have to, we have to give credit uh, to previous work on a particular topic. Because we are trying to uh, base our research based on existing works. That is the essence of doing literature review to find what others have done and then make sure that we, our research, fit in to what has been previously been done. So we can't just uh, do research in isolation. We have to base our work based on the work of others. Because we are solving, we are all working on a, on on the same topic. We are all so, uh, trying to solve the, the a problem. All the researchers or researchers are trying to solve a particular problem so we make sure that we, our work is based on the work of others we have to relate our research gap our research with the work of others show how it has improved upon the state of the art know that we are doing our research in isolation then lack of academic writing style so uh, a formal uh, right academic writing style is a formal writing style so we have to uh, uh, we have to read through what is academic writing style how does academic writing style differs from uh, informal uh, uh, write, writing that we do every day on social media and other uh, write-ups so academic writing differs from our normal everyday writing that we do so we have to make sure that we are able to, we have been able to present our search gap using academic writing style so developing originality we say that our research gap has to be unique has to have an element of uniqueness and novelty so what what does it mean uh, a research gap and a research contribution to the uh, novel so now one of the one of those criteria that fulfill novelty number one is setting down a major piece of new information in writing for the first time so when we set a new information when we find new information that uh, other people have other researchers have were not being able to find then that is a uh, it has it is an original work it's an original idea so that is uh one of the criteria that uh, fulfilled uh, novelty so writing down a major piece of new information you're writing for the first time then continuously pre uh, previously original piece of work so finding a particular solution and then we extend it we improve upon it that is also a novelty originality then also carrying out imperial imperial work that has not been done before so when we find an idea and then uh, we realize that no one has performed any empirical work on it and then we decided to uh, carry out the experiment and then evaluate it with the state of the art then that is also an element that's an element of novelty no one has done it before and we are doing it for the first time then also using already non-material with a new interpretation so when we have uh, already non-material but 
uh, we try to interpret it in a new way that no one has and has looked at it from that angle, from that direction. Now that is also a novelty. Then try out in this in, in a new country, in a new location. So uh, an idea, a scheme, an algorithm, something has been implemented in one particular country and then we bring it into our own country and then try to implement it with different population, different culture, different environmental factors. We try to uh, implement it in a particular different new area and that also has an uh, element of novelty. Or taking a particular technique and applying it in a new area. So when we take a, a technique that has been applied within uh, this same computer science in, in, in one particular area and then we decide to apply it in another area that is also a, a novelty originality also uh, when we bring a new ed evidence to bear on an old issue so uh, everybody is looking at this particular issue from that particular direction and then we bring out a new evidence uh, a new evidence a new knowledge on an old issue so this is also a originality then bringing a uh, cross discipline cross discipline disciplinary integrity integration i use different methodologies so when we uh, cross uh, when we find uh, different uh, techniques from uh, across some different areas and then we integrate it into one solution a, a technique called hybridization so when we have let's say a solution a solution b solution c and then we combine three what we call hybridization we combine the three solutions together in such a way that they inherit the strength of those three uh, solutions without inheriting their weakness then that is a, a novelty we have bring out a new solution that is more that is better than what has been done before they're also looking at areas that people in the discipline have not looked at before so when we are doing literature review we realize that there are some areas that other researchers have not looked into and then we decide to look at that particular area and that is also originality then uh, adding knowledge this is very related to the first point adding knowledge in a way that have not previously been done before so setting any piece of information writing for the first time that is uh, originality so we talk about you say creativity is very important in finding research gaps so how do we how there are some ways that we can enhance our creativity so we assume a broad perspective so uh, we think widely our, about our research topic instead of looking at it pre preconceived position so we are trying to not let us not just agree with the state of the art let us widen our horizon let us think outside the box so that we will be able to find the search gap so we assume a broad perspective instead of looking at it at a at from a narrow angle so we look at it broadly so we read widely the wider we read the more we become an expert on a particular topic and the more is our potential for finding research gaps then we try to enjoy activities such as walking when you walk uh, we listen to music we meditate and they dream and this will stimulate creative ideas so all work without play makes that make jacks a dull boy so we have to dedicate some time where we go for leisure activities where to refresh our brain and then this will uh, stimulate our creative juices and then make sure we will be, we have been able to come up with new innovative ideas also we give ourselves time originality is a developing process it's not something that is developed overnight so as we continue as we are always as we are brainstorming thinking about it we have to give it time to, for the idea to the to for us to conceive an idea and for the idea to develop and mature into something that we can propose as a contribution to knowledge and then we collect ideas use the reflection daily writing mind maps and journals to expand the material we can use to build creative ideas so we uh, our reflection daily writing whatsoever idea that come up that just pop off we put it into writing and using mind maps these are ways that we can use to to uh, build creative solutions and then also open to playing and playfulness people often think of ideas when they are not trying to think about their research so when we are we have uh we are having our leisure time an idea can just pop up when we are when we we have not we are we are not dedicating time to thinking about the research we are doing something else an idea can just come up uh pop up so that is why you uh, you have a piece of paper all, all within our um, our smartphones we might have some applications for not taking so when a, when an idea just come just 
comes into our head we can quickly take it down within that particular application and then we'll be able to come and work on that particular idea later on and then also engage in brainstorming sessions uh, you let yourself think freely what seems to be like a crazy idea may turn into a brilliant discovery and also if we are we are thinking about creativity we shouldn't be afraid of failure so uh, we, are, uh, we shouldn't be afraid of, of, of trying. We have to try. We might fail, we might succeed. So we shouldn't be afraid of failure. So it can open our mind to new possibilities and reveal the value of critical thinking. So don't be afraid of failing. If you, are, if you want to be creative, we shouldn't be afraid of, uh, of fail. We might fail. Yes, failure is part of life. But when we fail, we wake up again and we realize our mistake and then we'll be able to uh, work on that particular uh, mistake. And then also also consider yourself uh, creative the power of positive thinking say we have to believe that we can when we believe that we can and then we accomplish what we set uh, ourselves uh, what we set ourselves to tackle so whatsoever we want to tackle we have to believe put it in our mind that we can do it and then we'll be able to do it